it may be difficult to believe that the waters of beautiful lagoons like these may contain toxic elements. But the recent incident of pollution at Plan de Roche was yet another grim reminder of the way we abuse our natural surroundings. It's not just about what is directly dumped into the sea, but many other activities that impact the groundwater, the soil, the air and the overall ecosystem. Recent figures by Statistics Mauritius are indicative of the fact that year after year the degradation has only worsened. Environmental engineer Vasen Korpumutu takes us through some of the highlights. When we look at these figures, we can see that the forest area has decreased by 35 hectares between 2012 and 2013. Around only 2% of the original forest of Mauritius is left since colonization. The, the trend is still there. Another figure which is very, um, very uh, striking to me is the, the rise in the import of pesticides between 2012 and 2013. Uh, I think that in, in Mauritius we are one of the countries in the world where the use of pesticides per inhabitant is one of the highest in the world. Some experts overseas, for example, can say that by analysing the blood of a Mauritian, you can see the traces of pesticides. Another threat we continue to face is that of climate change. At over 3,500 tonnes, CO2 emissions continue to increase due to the rise in the energy sector. We should be aware that the rise in sea level, which is linked to CO2 emissions, global, both global and locally, are going to affect us tremendously, even more than larger countries. When you look also at uh, other figures like uh, the solid waste uh, which is generated in our island, uh, we, have, we can see really a sharp increase. We always think about all these measures which have been announced, for example, for composting of, of green waste. We've seen measures, for example, for the reduction of plastic waste. These figures are there to prove that these measures are not there. Historian and environmentalist Ms. Adi Tilak voices her concerns about sustainability. One primary concern we have is the loss of natural assets that is taking us further and further away from sustainability. We have been allowing built-up development in sensi environmentally sensitive areas that, that include uh, wetlands, coastal ecosystems, islets, estuaries, mountain slopes. By um, building over water catchment areas, we have been reducing the amount of water that goes into our groundwater tables, thereby reducing the amount of drinking water we're going to have. So these are concerns I could go on. So what can be a good way forward in bringing about remedial action? We have to perform a kind of comprehensive cost-benefit cost analysis so as to plan what, how and where best to, con to conduct such uh, built-up development. And development, and that is very important, development that is not guided by short-term gains, that are not quick fixes. Um, we have to, for example, revisit the National Physical Development Plan for competing needs in a way that guarantees sustainability. There are many countries struggling today with irreversible damage to their natural surroundings. Experts warn us that we shouldn't have to wait for the day when it's too late to save the island. The designated official at the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development declined to comment on this story.